This video is going to discuss Rule 67 and that is your expropriation. So these are the topics that we are going to discuss. First, matters to alleged in complaint for expropriation. Two stages in every action for expropriation when plaintiff can immediately enter into possession of the real property, the new system of immediate payment of initial just compensation, defenses and objections, order of expropriation, assertment of just compensation, appointment of commissioners, the commissioner's report, and the court action upon commissioner's report, rights of plaintiff upon judgment and payment, and last is the effect of recording of judgment. Again, this is in accordance with the syllabus issued by the Supreme Court. Take note that your Rule 67 is the procedural law. Rule 67 lays down the procedure by which the government takes possession of private property. So if your Rule 67 is the procedural law, then what is the substantive law? That is your Article 3, Section 9 of the 1987 Constitution. Private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. But we all know that kahit wala si Article 3, Section 9, still the government can exercise its power to expropriate because the power of eminent domain is one of the inherent powers of the government. In expropriation, there is forced taking of private property. In expropriation, the private owner is deprived of property against his will. That is the reason why yung Section 9 is nakasulat talaga sa Article 3 under the Bill of Rights para this would be the safeguard of the land of the landowner against the abuses of the government. So we'll go now to the requisites. What are the requisites in order for the government to exercise its power of eminent domain? Number one, the property taken must be a private property and there must be a genuine necessity to take that private property and the taking must be for public use there must be payment of just compensation and it must comply with the due process of law. So take note, ha? requisites, private property, necessity, public use, just compensation, and due process of law. Question, what are the stages in your action for expropriation? Answer is, there are two. The first stage or the first phase determines the propriety of the action. The second stage or the second phase determines the compensation to be paid to the landowner. In the first stage, there will be determination of the authority of the plaintiff to exercise his power to expropriate and the propriety of its exercise in the context of the facts involved in the suit. How about in the second stage? In the second stage, there will be determination by the court of the just compensation for the property sought to be taken. How do you initiate an action for expropriation? Madali lang. First, the expropriating authority must file a complaint for expropriation. Take note ha, that the requirement of the law is it must be a verified complaint for expropriation. After that, the court will issue summons. Dalawa ang posibleng scenario. Number one is maaring si defendant has no objection or number two, defendant has objection. If defendant has no objections, then defendant will file a notice of appearance with manifestation that he has no objection. How about if he has objections? Then in that case, the defendant will file an answer with objections. And during that time, there will be now determination, there will be hearing, there will be trial, and the court will issue an order, an order whether it is an order of dismissal or an order of condemnation. Ano ba itong order of condemnation? That is the same with your order of expropriation. Parehas lang yang dalawa. Kaya lang sa America, American jurisprudence, mas ginagamit nila si order of condemnation. So if you are the government and your action for expropriation is dismissed, then what is now your remedy? Your remedy is to appeal. How about if you are the defendant? 
and there is now an order of expropriation or order of um, condemnation what is your remedy your remedy is also appeal so this is the first stage take note ha? this is the first stage of your action for expropriation take note that even if there is an appeal from the order of expropriation or from the order of condemnation still it will not prevent the court from going into the second stage bucket because very clear is si section 4 that the appeal shall not prevent the court from determining the just compensation to be paid so after the order of expropriation the court has that mandate to appoint commissioners magkakaroon ng hearing sa commissioners wherein the commissioners will determine the just compensation they will receive evidence they will conduct ocular inspection and then they will submit partial or final report to the court and on the basis of that report the court will now render a decision so this is again the second stage of your action for expropriation we go now to matters to alleged in complaint for expropriation. So we said that we initiate this action by filing a verified complaint. But who will file? Who will initiate? Who is that expropriating authority? Answer is Congress. But si Congress lang ba ang pwedeng mag-file? Answer is no because Congress can delegate it to the president, to the admin bodies, usually yung DPWH ang involved dito, or to the local government units or LGUs, and even to private enterprises performing public services. Who is your defendant? Your defendant is any person who owns the property, who claims to have ownership over that property, or who occupies that property. Ang importante sa defendant is he has an interest over that property. We go to verified complaint. We said that the requirement of the law is that the complaint must be verified. So ano ang matters that you are going to allege in your complaint? First is you have to state there with certainty the right of expropriation state with certainty the right of expropriation also you have to state with certainty the purpose of expropriation but if the right of the plaintiff to expropriate is already conferred by law then the complaint does not have to state with certainty the right of expropriation bucket kasi meron nangang batas what else you have to describe the real property sought to be expropriated. If it is a personal property, then you have to describe the personal property. Ano pa ang isusulat mo sa complaint? You have to name all the persons who own the property or name all the persons who claim to have ownership over that property or who occupy that property. Ang importante talaga is meron silang interest over the property. Sabi nga dyan sa section 1, you have to show in your complaint the separate interest of these persons. Take note ha, ang sinasabi ng, ng batas is all persons because all of these persons are your defendants. How about kung nung nag-research ka, nakita mo that the title is still under the name of the Republic of the Philippines or the title is obscure or doubtful na hindi mo alam kung sino na ngayon ang real owners. Then in that case, you have to make an allegation or you have to make a statement to that effect in your complaint. Next question. Where are you going to file your verified complaint? Answer is RTC. RTC ang my jurisdiction regardless of the value of the property. Bakit? Because this is an action that is not capable of pecuniary estimation. Next topic, when plaintiff can immediately enter into possession of the real property. 
take note ha that pag pinag-uusapan si writ of possession, the next thing that should come into your mind is preliminary deposit. Writ of possession is equivalent to your preliminary deposit. But question, when can you file a motion for the issuance of the writ of possession? Answer is, upon the filing of the complaint or at any time thereafter, you can file a motion for the issuance of the writ of possession. Kailan naman igagrant ni judge ang writ of possession? Answer is, if there is a preliminary deposit. There is, if there is a preliminary deposit. Importante si preliminary deposit if itong si government is nagmamadaling makapasok sa property para kanya nang magalaw ang property. Maaring magtatayo siya ng mga poste na. Therefore, your preliminary deposit is necessary only if the plaintiff desires entry on the land upon its institution of the action. Kung hindi naman kailangan, then it could always wait until the order of expropriation is issued before it enters upon the land. The only requisites for authorizing immediate entry and expropriation proceedings are number one, the filing of a complaint for expropriation which must be sufficient in form and substance and second is the making of a deposit that is equivalent to the assessed value of the property subject to expropriation. Take note that if there is now a compliance with these requirements, then the issuance of the writ of possession becomes ministerial. Ministerial na lang yan. So in that case, kung ayaw mag-comply ni judge, you go to your Rule 65 and that is mandamus. What is then the purpose of your preliminary deposit? That will constitute advanced payment in the event that the expropriation proceeds and stands as indemnity for the damages should the proceedings not succeed. Upon the filing of the complaint or at any time thereafter and after due notice to the defendant and making a preliminary deposit, then the plaintiff can now enter the real property involved. But how much is that preliminary deposit? What is the value? Take note that under Rule 67 and the property involved is a real property, then the preliminary deposit is equivalent to the assessed value of the property for purposes of taxation. Assessed value of the property. Take note ha, pinag-uusapan natin is Rule 67. Bakit? Kung LGU ang nag -e expropriate then ang deposit is different. Iba ang amount na involved. At kung papasok si Right of Way Act, then iba din ang amount involved. Kaya ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is Rule 67 muna, Assessed Value of the Property. How about if it is a personal property? then the value of that personal property shall be provisionally ascertained by the court. Where are you going to deposit? With the authorized government depository. Dati, under the old rule, PNB lang. But now, as long as it is an authorized bank, then you can deposit in that authorized government depository. What is the form of deposit? Answer is money. But pwede rin ang certificate of, this, of deposit as long as meron kang authority coming from the court. After the deposit is made, what is the next uh, step? Then the court shall order the sheriff to place the plaintiff in possession of the property involved. This is the reason why ministerial na lamang ang pag-issue ng writ of possession once there is a preliminary deposit. Sigwe tayo, let's go to Republic Act number 10752 or the Right of Way Act. You read section 2 kasi importante. But 
Why do we need to study Republic Act number 10752? Because if you will be confronted with a bar question, then the first thing you have to do is ask yourself what kind of a project is involved. Is it a national government project? Bakit? Because in that case, hindi mag apply si Rule 67 but Republic Act number 10752. In fact, meron ngang mga bago dito sa procedure as um, given to us by the Supreme Court this January 2021, but it is already outside of your uh, coverage, bar exam coverage. So, what are the government projects or what are those national government projects? First is all national government infrastructure projects and the public service facilities, engineering works, and service contracts, even if undertaken by GOCC. Also, those that are under the Build, Operate, and Transfer Law or yung BOT. Third, other related and necessary activities such as site acquisition, supply or installation of equipment and materials, implementation, construction, completion, operation, maintenance, improvement, repair, and rehabilitation, regardless of the source of funding, and pwede rin pumasok si local government units, they can adapt the provision of Republic Act Number 10752 for use in the acquisition of the right-of-way for local government infrastructure projects. Under the Right of Way Act, if itong si plaintiff nagmamadaling makapasok sa property in the defendant, then he has to make a deposit. What is the value of that deposit? Answer is 100%. 100% of the value of the land. What is the basis of that 100%? Based on the current zonal valuation of the BIR, issued not more than three years prior to the filing of the expropriation complaint. If meron mga improvement, then dapat si plaintiff mag-deposit din ng replacement cost at current market value of the improvements and structures. If merong mga crops and trees, then the plaintiff also must make a deposit of the current market value of the crops and trees located within the property. So, magkaiba siya sa Rule 67 kasi ang sabi nga natin sa Rule 67, how much is the preliminary deposit? If it is a personal property, then it will be provisionally ascertained and fixed by the court. But if it is a real property, then the preliminary deposit is equivalent to the assessed value of the property. But how about if your expropriating authority is the local government unit? In that case, Section 19 of the Local Government Code will apply. How much is that deposit? At least 15% of the fair market value of the property and that 15% is based on the current tax deck of the property to be expropriated. So, magkaibaha sa Right of Way Act, your basis is on the current market value. In Rule 67, it is based on the assessed value and in Local Government Code, it is based on the fair market value. Saan pa may difference? If you go to your Rule 67, where are you going to deposit the money? You are going to deposit the money with the authorized government depository. How about in RA 10752, you are going to deposit that to the court in favor of the owner. Who has the authority to file a complaint for expropriation? Answer is Congress. But Congress is allowed to delegate this to LGUs. And the source of the power of the LGUs to file an action for expropriation is Section 19 of RA 7160 or the Local Government Code. But despite the existence of this legislative grant in favor of the LGUs, ang court meron pa duty. The duty of the court is to determine whether the power of eminent domain is being exercised in accordance with the delegating law. That is why si court kailangan maipakita niya na si LGU is nagcomply 
ng requisites. Number one is, meron bang ordinance? Was it for a public use, purpose, or welfare? Was there a payment of just compensation? And whether there was a valid and definite offer? Pag si LGU ang nag-e-exercise ng power of eminent domain, dapat si court alerto. Dapat si court makita niya na lahat ng requisites is na-comply. Number one requisite is ordinance. There must be an ordinance enacted by the local legislative council authorizing the mayor or the local chief executive to exercise the power or to pursue expropriation proceedings over a particular private property. Take note ha, dapat ordinance and hindi resolution. Magkaiba yan. Ordinance and resolution are two different animals. In ordinance, that is a law. Sa resolution, that is merely a declaration of the opinion or the sentiment of a lawmaking body over a specific matter. And if you are talking to, uh, if you are going to talk about resolution that is only temporary in nature, unlike your ordinance which possesses a general and permanent character. And take note, pag ordinance, iba ang requirement when you enact that one. A third, a third reading is necessary. That is not the same when you talk about resolution. Number two. The exercise must be for a public use, public purpose, or public welfare, or for the benefit of the poor and the landless. Number three, there must be payment of just compensation as required under Section 9, Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution and other pertinent laws. And last is, there must be a valid and definite offer previously made to the owner of the property sought to be expropriated, but that offer was not accepted. After the plaintiff files his verified complaint for expropriation, then the court will issue summons. Dalawa ang pwedeng mangyari. Either si defendant has no objection or defense to the action or to the taking of his property or defendant has objection to the filing or the allegations in the complaint or he has defense or objection to the taking of his property. In that way, what are you going to file defendant if you have no objection? Then you have to file and serve a notice of, of appearance and a manifestation to the effect that you have no objection. When are you going to file that? Within the time stated in the summons. What is the content? The content is you will specifically designate there or identify the property in which you claim to be interested. After that, you will be entitled to notice of all proceedings affecting the same. How about if you have objections? Then what you are going to file is an answer. You are going to serve your answer within the time stated in the summons and in your answer, you shall specific, specifically designate or identify the property in which you claim to have an interest. You have to state the nature and extent of your interest claimed and you have to adduce all your objections and defenses to the taking of his property. Take note ha, hindi pwedeng mag-allege in your answer or in any subsequent pleading, counterclaim, cross-claim, or third-party complaint. Three possible scenarios kay defendant with objections. Hindi siya nag-file ng answer. Instead, he filed a motion to dismiss because according to him, meron naman siyang mga objections or meron siyang defenses. Is he allowed to do that? Answer is no. Very clear si Section 3 that after the issuance of the summons, if you have objections, then what you need to do is you file your answer and then you put there your objections or defenses to the taking of the property. How about nag-file naman ng answer but nakalimutan isulat lahat? So are you allowed to amend your answer? Section 3 again has the answer. You are allowed not later than. 10 days from the filing thereof. Scenario number 3. You did not file your answer. Walang answer at all. 
Pag walang answer, under the ordinary procedure, ano ang pwedeng gawin ni plaintiff? He can file a motion to declare the defendant in default. Pwede rin ba yan sa Rule 67? Answer is no. The failure to file an answer does not produce all the disastrous consequences of default in ordinary civil actions. Bakit? Because very clear si Section 3, during the second stage of the expropriation proceedings, yung second stage is the determination of the just compensation, itong si defendant na hindi nag-appear, itong si defendant na hindi nag-file ng answer, he is still allowed to present his evidence as to the amount of the compensation to be paid to him for his property and his share in the distribution of the award. 2011 bar question, which of the following is not consistent with the rules governing expropriation proceedings? Choices are letter A, the court shall declare the defendant who fails to answer the complaint in default and render judgment against him. Letter B, the court shall refer the case to the Board of Commissioners to determine the amount of just compensation. Letter C, the plaintiff shall make the required deposit and take immediate possession of the property suit sought to be expropriated. And last choice or letter D is the plaintiff may appropriate the property for public use after judgment and payment of the compensation fixed in it despite the appeal of the defendant. The answer here is letter A. Bakit letter A? What did we say again? Under Rule 67, hindi ka na pwedeng mag-file ng motion to dismiss. Rule 67 requires the filing of an answer as a responsive pleading to the complaint. And if you are a defendant who has objections to the taking of your property, you are required to file an answer and in your answer, you raise all your available defenses. Bakit? Because your failure to file an answer it will not produce the disastrous consequences of default just like in your ordinary civil actions. Bakit? Because here sa Rule 67, kahit hindi ka nag-appear, hindi ka nag-file ng answer, still during the second stage or during the determination of just compensation, still defendant, you are allowed to present your evidence on just compensation. That is very clear according to your Section 3. 2009 Bar Exam Question The Republic of the Philippines through the DPWH filed with the RTC a complaint for the expropriation of the parcel of land owned by Jovito. The land is to be used as an extension of the national highway. Attached to the complaint is a bank certificate showing that there is on deposit with the Land Bank of the Philippines an amount equivalent to the assessed value of the property. DPWH filed a motion for the issuance of a writ of possession. Jovito filed a motion to dismiss the complaint on the ground that there are other properties which would better serve the purpose. Question letter A, will the motion to dismiss filed by Hobito prosper? Answer is definitely no. What did we say? If you are a defendant and you have your objections, then you need to file an answer. And in your answer, you put there your objections or your defenses to the taking of the property. That is very clear according to your section 3. Kaya hindi ka pwedeng mag-file ng motion to dismiss. Question letter B, as judge, will you grant the writ of possession prayed for by DPWH? Answer is again, no. Bakit? Dahil kulang. Bakit? Because what is the project involved here? That is a national government project, nasa national highway. And if it is a national government project, what law will govern? Is it Rule 67 or the Right of Way Act? Answer is RA 10752 or the Right of Way Act. And under the Right of Way Act, ang preliminary deposit is not equivalent to the assessed value of the property, but rather 100% of the value of the land based on the current zonal valuation of the BIR 
issued not more than three years prior to the filing of the expropriation complaint. That is the reason why the court will not grant the motion for the issuance of a writ of possession. And again, saan mo deposit ang 100% of the value of the land, then you will deposit it to the court in favor of the owner. Magkaiba kung under sa Rule 67, you will deposit it with the authorized government depository. Here in Right of Way Act, you will deposit it to the court in favor of the owner. After the defendant files his answer, if he has objections or files his notice of appearance with manifestation, if he has no objections, then what is next? The court now will determine the propriety of the action. There will be determination now of the authority of the plaintiff to exercise the power of eminent domain. So ano ang nangyayari doon? The trial court will resolve questions like, whether the expropriator has the power of eminent domain, whether the use of the property is public, whether the taking is necessary, and should there be conditions precedent for the exercise of the power, whether they have been complied with. Just like yung sa mga LGUs. So kung si LGU ang plaintiff, dapat si court titingnan niya kung yung requisites ng local government code is observed. After that, it ends with an order of dismissal or an order of condemnation or an order of expropriation. Take note that your order of dismissal is a final order. Your order of condemnation also is also a final order. Therefore, what is your next step? Since it is a final order, the next step is you appeal. We'll go now to the order of expropriation. That is your section 4. So when can the court issue an order of expropriation? Merong dalawang instances. First is, kung si defendant merong objections and defenses, and yung objections and defenses ni defendant are overruled, then the court can issue an order of expropriation. Kailan pa pwede? If there is no party who will appear to defend, then the court in that case can also issue an order of expropriation. What is the contents of the order of expropriation? Take note, ha, the order of expropriation will declare that the plaintiff has a lawful right to take the property sought to be expropriated and that it is for the public use or purpose described in the complaint subject to the condition that there will be payment of just compensation to be determined as of the date of the taking of the property or the filing of the complaint whichever came first. Question, what is the remedy of the defendant in case of a final order of expropriation? Answer is appeal. Sinabi na natin to, from your order of dismissal or from your order of condemnation or expropriation, the next, the next step is appeal. Bakit appeal? Because your order of dismissal or your order of expropriation that is considered a final order. But appeal under what rule? You appeal using the rule under uh, you, you appeal using rule 41. Bakit rule 41? Because this is a case decided by the regional trial court, trial court in the exercise of its original jurisdiction. Therefore, rule 41 will govern that is an ordinary appeal. Saan ka mag appeal Sa court of appeals. What is the period? The period is 30 days. Bakit naging 30 days at hindi 15 days? Because take note, you will be filing also a record on appeal. Kailan papasok ang record on appeal or kailan ka dapat magpa-file ng record on appeal? Answer is, in special proceedings and other cases of multiple or separate appeals where the law or these rules so require. So since in your Rule 67, it requires multiple appeals, therefore you need record on appeal.
Take note ha, you file notice of appeal plus record on appeal and the period is 30 days. Another question, what is the effect of the filing of an appeal from the final order of expropriation? Answer is, wala. Because the court will still continue with the second stage of the expropriation proceeding and that is the determination of the just compensation. So even if there is an appeal, again, it will not prevent the court from determining the just compensation to be paid. Tuloy pa rin sa second stage. Next, what is the prohibition on the plaintiff after the issuance of the order of expropriation? Answer is, after the rendition of such an order, the plaintiff is not permitted to dismiss or discontinue the proceeding except on such terms as the court deems just and equitable. Section 4 is very clear that after the rendition of the order of expropriation, the plaintiff shall not be permitted to dismiss or discontinue the proceeding. But we all know that this rule is not absolute. Bakit? Kasi pwede pa rin mag-file si, si, uh, si plaintiff ng motion to withdraw the uh, case or the action for expropriation. Kailan pwedeng mag-file si estate or si plaintiff ng motion to withdraw if the basis is public use? Pag nakita ni estate na wala ng public use, the taking is no longer for public use, then the state or the plaintiff can file a motion to withdraw anytime even during the pendency of the appeal or at any other stage of the proceedings. Bakit? Because we all know that the fundamental basis of your action for expropriation is public use. Diba? Isa yan sa mga requisites ng power of eminent domain, the taking of that private property must be for public use. That being true, the very moment that it appears at any stage of the proceeding that the expropriation is no longer for public use, then the action must necessarily fail and should be dismissed. That is the reason why the state or the plaintiff can file a motion to withdraw even during the pendency of the appeal or at any other stage of the proceedings. We also said that the grant or denial of any motion to withdraw in an expropriation proceeding is always subject to judicial discretion. But if the ground is wala nang public use, then si court has no other option but to dismiss the case. Bakit? Because again, you go back that one of the requisites of the exercise of power of eminent domain is that the property must be for public use. Since wala nang public use, dapat i-dismiss mo yung case. Wala kang choice dyan, court, kung hindi i-dismiss ang case. But can you dismiss the case ng basta-basta lang? Ganun na lang ba yun? Kinuha ang property mo. Tapos dahil sinabi ni government na hindi naman pala nila kailangan, hindi na for public use, yung pagkuha sa property, then dismiss na namin yung case. Ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? In this case of Metropolitan Water District versus De Los Angeles et al., this was decided, by the way, in 1931, but still up to this time, ginagamit pa rin yung ruling dito. Ano ang naging ruling dito ng Supreme Court? In that case, the record will be returned to the lower court and a writ of possession will be issued ordering and directing the uh, plaintiff to return to the defendants the land, the possession of the land in question immediately and that the, de the defendants will be permitted to have whatever damages they have suffered determined either in that action, same action, or in a separate action. So, take note ha, pag pinapadismiss ng gobyerno yung expropriation, this, uh, expropriation proceedings and the basis is public use, 
dapat ang ruling ng court is pinapabalik ang property sa defendants at magkakaroon ng damages. The action for damages can be made in the same action or in a separate action. And for the purpose of determining the amount of damages, the lower court should take into consideration the following, the loss of the defendant resulting from the dispossession of the land, the loss resulting from the deprivation of the occupation or use of the land, the expenses incurred by the defendant during the pendency of the action, including the attorney's fees, the destruction of the buildings, the canals, and growing crops at the time of the occupation of the land by the plaintiff, and all of the damages of whatever kind or character which the defendants may be able to prove and which have been occasioned by virtue of the institution of the action for expropriation.